Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at direct variation in the nonlinear relationships of the general 2 HSC course. Um, this is one of the more important areas, I, I reckon, on this topic. It's certainly always in the HSC and the trial papers. So it's a really good one to get a hold of. Um, so far, we've been doing a lot of work on linear um, relationships, and certainly direct variation is, in fact, more about linear. And then we get to have a look looking at uh, inverse variation, which is more the nonlinear style. Um, now, our linear graph we know is y equals mx plus b. Okay, now direct variation is the same sort of thing as this, except what you'll find when you're doing your graphs that there will be no y-intercept, which means that you will just have y equals mx, okay? Which means that your graph kind of looks like that. It's a straight line and will always start at the origin because it cuts the, um, the y-intercept, I guess, is zero. Now, direct variation uses a slightly modified formula. This is for, I guess, a straight line graph, y equals mx plus b. So use the formula y equals kx, Okay, where k is what we call the constant, the constant of variation. And it works in the same format as what the gradient would do. Um, for example, you might have something that says y equals 3x. And the reason it says it's um, direct variation, or they often use the word directly proportional, is because your x value is always being multiplied by the same number. For example, if x is 0, then 3 times 0 is 0. When x is 1, then 3 times 1 is 3. When x is 2, 3 times 2, y is 6. It's always being multiplied by the same number. That's why it's called directly proportional or varies directly with. So whenever you see the words um, direct variation varies directly or um, directly proportional to, we are looking at this formula y equals kx, and it is not on your formula sheet. So you need to remember your formula for this. Now, the questions are set up um, in a particular way that I've got my own style, I like to do it, and, and certainly I know the textbooks kind of follow my style, which is great. Um, but it's not always simply just directly proportional to, which means that it'd be, it's, a, it's a linear graph. We also have some nonlinear styles, which means you might be um, very directly with the square of something, which means it might be y equals kx squared. It might be um, cube of something, which means it's y equals kx cubed. Um, it might even be something like the square or the cube root, for example, which means that you know, you're know you doing the cube root of x. So there can be certainly different ones. y equals kx is certainly our um, first and foremost one, but we can have stuff, stuff to do with um, the square of x, the cube of x, or the square root or cube root of x, etc. But you can see each time I've got k times whatever I've got. Now, it's going to sound strange to start off with, guys. Trust me, this is really easy once you follow the couple of steps I'm going to give you. Okay, first question we're going to look at says the cost of a photocopier, C, in dollars, varies directly with. Okay, the minute I see that, the very first thing I write down is y equals kx because I know it's um, direct variation. It says varies directly with its speed, s, in pages per minute. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I move on to this other part of the information, instead of having y equals kx, I'm going to put c for the y and k times and I'm going to put a times in between, and I'm going to use S for the speed, because it's told me to use that. So I've just replaced my Y, my X, like you have on some of the other questions, with the particular values. Whatever comes first in this question to start off with will come first in this question. Okay, And that's really, really important, because the next part of the information we're going to need to use so we can try and find the value of K, the constant or the gradient, and they can often switch these things around. Let's have a quick look. It says a photocopier with a speed of 50 pages per minute costs $700. And automatically I can see that this costs $700. I know we'll be going with the C's. So see how it's important to make sure you have the letters um, to start off with. 
Now part A says, what is the proportionality constant K? Okay, it's just asking what is the value of K? So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna be putting in the extra information. So the cost was 700. I don't know what K is, and I know S is in pages per minute. That's my 50. I've just created an equation. I'm gonna get rid of the times 50 by dividing by 50. And I'm gonna simply put that in my calculator, 700 divided by uh, 50 to get the answer of 14. Very quickly, I found the value of um, K. That was part A. Part B says write an equation connecting C and S. Well, I've got, already got the C and S in there, but now what I can do is replace the constant or the gradient with the 14, that's my constant of variation, times by my S, and that becomes a formula, which is great because now I can use it. If I'm given S, I can find the cost. If I'm given the cost, I can find S. It's a really great formula that I've now got. I can uh, manipulate it to what I need. How much does a photocopier with a speed of 60 pages per minute cost? Well, cost equals 14 times the speed of 60 pages per minute. So I'm gonna simply type in now 14 times 60 to get my answer of $840. See how easy that was once I had my formula? Now, the funny thing is they can ask just that last question on its own, and each time you still need to write your formula down to start off with, you need to find your constant of variation, then you need to put it back in to find your proper equation connecting all of your values, and then you can use that to answer any other questions. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. The distance D of a missile falls is directly proportional to Y equals KX to the square of the time. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? It's not just proportional to the time, it's proportional to the square of the time, which means I'm going to be doing X squared. So if I now put my letters in, D equals K times, and it's the square of the time, so that's the T squared. So that's the very first thing that I'm writing down, even before I'm looking at my questions, that's gonna help me. The missile falls 3,600 meters after 30 seconds. So part A has asked to find the proportionality constant or the constant of variation. So I'm gonna now put in, now 3,600 meters is the distance, so 3,600 equals k times and 30 squared, because it's t squared. Now I'm gonna get rid of the times 30 squared by dividing it by 30 squared. And I'm gonna come up with, I'm gonna chuck them onto the calculator, 3600 divided by 30 squared, and it comes up with the answer of four, and I've got my answer there. Part B, how far will the missile fall in the first 10 seconds? Well, let's come, it hasn't asked me for the equation, but I'm gonna rewrite it so I have my equation. Distance equals, now I have the value of k, it's four times t squared. That is so crucial. Even if they don't ask me to do that um, equation, I need to write it in, it's gonna help me with the next part of the question. How far, or what is the distance, when we have 10 seconds. So my distance equals four times, in this case, time will be 10 seconds. I'm gonna put my square in as we have there. So it's simply just four times 100, which is gonna be 400. And look back and it says it's in meters, so 400 meters, I've got my answer. See again how easy it is to get that last part of the question um, once I had that formula. If they gave me the distance, I could simply work it out to find out what the time would be as well. That would be just as easy. So again, first of all, form the equation. Number two, find K. Number three, I guess we can say we're gonna update the equation. And number four, we're gonna find our answer. Okay, that will be gonna be happening for the next couple. Have a crack at the next one on your own, see what you can come up with. Okay, so the mass of a ball of M um, varies directly with, okay, varies directly. So Y, well, it's not very good color, is it? Um, y equals KX. Now, it says with the cube of its radius, which means it's gonna be the cubed of that one. So if I put the letters in, M equals K 
times and r is my radius cube that means the cube of the radius that's the very first thing i'm going to do um, it says if the mass of the ball is 30, 324 grams the radius of the ball is six centimeters what is the mass of a ball that has a radius of five it hasn't asked me for the value of k but i know i need to go and find k so the very next thing they give me here is give me information that i can use to substitute in just like we did before to find the value of k so 324 grams that's going to be my mass 324 equals k times the radius of the ball is six so six cubed opposite of times six cubed is divided by six cubed so k equals i'm going to type that into my calculator so 324 uh, divided by six cubed and i come up with 1.5 or 3 over 2. okay now again it hasn't asked me to write the equation but i know it's going to help me so m equals 1.5 times r cubed that is your absolute goal that is a must because now i can find m if they give me r or i can find r if they give me m okay now this question goes on to say what is the mass so that's good if the radius is five centimeters i'm just going to chuck the five in and chuck into my calculator so 1.5 times 5 cubed and i'm going to come up with 187.5 and looking at the mass it's in grams grams i've got my answer okay so i'm hoping you can start to see that although yeah they're pretty tough questions and certainly when you have to do things like cubes and squares and that sort of stuff it's a bit tough but it becomes pretty monotonous in terms of the way that you uh, actually answer them it's pretty much the same every time just some of them might have an a b and c others won't the length of a beehive is directly proportional to okay so y equals kx to the square root of the number of bees well that's going to be the square root of x so now it hasn't given me letters this time so i'm going to make up some some letters i'm going to use l for length so length equals k times and it's the square root of the number of b's so i'm going to put square root of n you could do b if you wished so that's my first step i've come up with a an equation of variation i'm going to look at what the question's asked for a what is the length of the hive in centimeters when there are 600 b's how many b's live in the hive that are 15 centimeters in length well it doesn't talk about the constant of variation so i need to go and find that first of all so i go back to my question it says the length of a hive is 14 centimeters so 14 equals k times and the number of b's is 784 so the opposite of times the square root of 784 is divided by the square root of 784 therefore k equals i'm going to type in my calculator 14 divided by the square root of 784 i get 0 0.5 or a half i'm going to rewrite that and say l equals 0 0.5 times the square root of n i'm now going to use that for the next two questions so what is the length of the beehive um, when it's 15 centimeters or so of a hive that is 15 centimeters in sorry what is the length of the hive in centimeters when there are 600 bees well 0 0.5 times the square root of 1600 the length will equal so i'm just going to simply type into my calculator making sure i enter it in all correctly we get the answer of 20 um, grams or no is that 20 centimeters beautiful that's the first question now part b what how many bees okay now this time i'm trying to find the n live in a hive that is 15 centimeters in length so i'm going to go back to my formula i'm going to put the 15 where the l is 0 0.5 times the square root of n now yes this is more complicated but certainly we can do it it's not a really hard question the opposite of times 0 0.5 is divided by 0 0.5 i'm going to put that in my calculator i'm going to get the answer of 30 equals the square root of n now i want to find n so how do i get rid of the square root well the opposite of square root is squared so i'm going to square that one to get n equals and type it in 30 squared which should equal 900 i get 900 b's which again it's certainly a bit more complex than the last couple of questions when you're um, given the subject i guess and trying to work back to find the other letter but you can see it's just an equation so each time folks um I might just put, it, put this on a new on a new page. 
First of all, I want you to form your equation of variation. I want you to find the value of k, which is the constant of variation. Three, rewrite your equation. And number four, answer your questions. Now the good thing is the next lesson we're looking at inverse variation, the actual process is identical to this. It's just instead of having y equals kx as your formula, the next one, it will be slightly different. It will be y equals k over x, okay? But the rest of this is going to be pretty straightforward. Please crack some of, through some of these questions in the uh, past questions, the past papers, because you will certainly see a few of these in your coming up in your exam in the trials and the HSC. Have an awesome day, guys. Hope this made uh, a bit of sense too.